Our top focus at this hour, the incumbent Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison has conceded defeat. While addressing his party supporters after the latest trends project, the opposition Labour Party's victory, listen in. Tonight, I've spoken to the Leader of the Opposition and the incoming Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, and I've congratulated him on his election victory this evening. This comes after 17 million Australians voted to oust the incumbent coalition government formed by Conservatives after their third consecutive win in the previous elections. The early trends show the opposition Labour Party ahead of the ruling Conservative coalition and the Australian news channels are projecting Anthony Albanese to be the next Prime Minister. The party will return to power after being in opposition for nine years. The Labour Party needs 76 seats to form the government in Australia, while the Senate has 76, out of which only 40 seats will be contested for. Scott Morrison's defeat comes after the pandemic hit Australia, witness inflation of 5.1%, the highest level since 2001. This, of course, is the big story coming in at this hour that the incumbent Prime Minister of Australia, that is Scott Morrison, has now conceded defeat in the election. According to news outlets and other reports, the incoming Prime Minister is Anthony Albanese, who, of course, has his task cut out for him. Now, for more analysis, we were earlier joined by Adam Hancock, who is a journalist from Sydney. We asked him about what policy changes we can expect from Anthony Albanese, who, of course, is the incoming Prime Minister of Australia, according to news reports. Let's listen in. Albanese is to win. I mean, let's be honest, the campaign was fairly light on policy. Um, he's put forward a couple of things, like he's going to try and ensure that wage growth matches the cost of groceries, and um, also childcare as well. He, one of his big policies was to m make it more affordable, more accessible, allow more people to, to, to get access to it. So they, they will be the two ones. He's going to look, obviously, at the cost of living crisis. He's talked a lot about that. He's talked about how his government will be able to control that. Um, they've proposed a bit of a budget um, and how they're going to how they're going to spend and how they're going to try and solve this problem. So I think that's really where he'll start his focus. But again, we don't know that many details because it's been fairly light on policy. Once again, our top focus at this hour in this broadcast, Australia election continues to dominate news. The opposition Labour Party wins the vote as the incumbent Prime Minister Scott Morrison has now conceded defeat, even though the vote counting was still incomplete. That is what news outlets are saying. Anthony Albanese's opposition Labour Party has won Australia's election, but votes are still being counted and it remained to be seen if it would achieve a parliamentary majority. However, the incumbent Prime Minister Scott Morrison conceded defeat late on Saturday, even while the vote counting was incomplete. In his address, he congratulated Albanese on his election victory and said that he had spoken to the leader of the opposition and, of course, the incoming Prime Minister at this point, Anthony Albanese. Now, earlier, as we spoke to Adam Hancock, he also enlightened us about what uh, the incoming Prime Minister spoke about Australia's focus at the Quad Summit. Listen in. Um, I think it will be about building relations. Um, they will be, you know, looking to, if they, especially if they've got a new Prime Minister, they'll, they'll be looking to continue that good relationship. Morrison had a very good relationship with the Quad leaders. Um, China will obviously be a huge talking point, it always is when it comes to the quad. Um, and they'll be looking at global issues as well, the distribution of COVID vaccines, the, uh, the supply chain issues that are happening around the world at the moment. I'm sure Australia may bring up the issue of, the, uh, of China and the Pacific Island nations. They're some of the key factors I think that the, the new prime minister or potentially Scott Morrison even would be looking at at this quad meeting. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.